sidewalks and it's not overly safe. Okay, um, trailer parking. There is no trailer parking for you on Friday. Um, there really should be no need um, to park a trailer um, because um, load-in is on Thursday, um, but we just don't have that many spots available. If you're in dire need, if you're traveling from out of town and you're in dire need of some sort of parking for your trailer um, for Friday, um, contact me. I'll put you in touch with Regina and we can see about working something out. But with having the school population there on Friday as, as well as our population, we just aren't going to have space for, um, for a trailer. Um, you may park with your trailer on Saturday. Um, you can park in the, um, the ball lot on Saturday. Um, Regina, will there be room for trailers in the school lot? We could probably make room on the east side of the building for trailer parking down at the bottom of the staff parking lot. Uh, okay, we have I'm a question if there's, question if there's any parking, parking for motor yeah, homes. I would be inclined to say there's not going to be on-site yeah, parking that for would motor, be... motor homes. At least on Friday would there would be. With that. If they, if they ahead, need Richard. to stay overnight, um, if there's, a, if there's motorhomes involved, have them get a hold of me and we'll make arrangements. Okay. Um, yeah, if, but that's exactly. only if they're staying over, only if they're staying overnight. Regina, or just if, if anyone that wants would be to bring motorhomes, they can, okay. We're just really tight on parking, so... I mean, if it's a if it's a facility that their folks are staying tonight, I, I'd probably be more inclined. The lights go out up there, and it's really pitch black. So, uh, yeah, I'd I'd hesitate. But if someone needed something specific, just give us a call, and we'll we'll see what we can work out. Okay. So if you if you need to do a motorhome, oh, I think that Kevin is back online because the screen just got taken away from me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. How rude. Um, so we just went over trailer parking. No worries, I've been listening. Yep. Oh, good. Yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, sorry about that. We're, we pay a lot of money for Internet access, which means it's very unreliable here at the office. So, <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, and I, I'll echo exactly what they said. Is, uh, the, uh, motor, motor homes is going to be a stretch. Any other questions about uh, trailer parking or anything like that? We'll move on. Okay, so um, bus transportation. So after 8 a.m. on Friday, uh, buses can drop students behind the pits using the school bus lane. And so uh, this is not a bus parking lot, though. Uh, they, they can drop the students and leave. Um, they're... The uh, recommended choice for your driver is to go find the Safeway park parking lot. It's north on 132nd. Uh, buses park there all the time. So, uh, uh, and I'm sure there's probably a Starbucks in the parking lot, and your driver will be very happy about that. Um, the uh, the school, you know, the the bus the bus lane is used by the school a couple times a day. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you would find alternate parking. Bus drivers are good at that anyway. So. Questions about the bus parking? Okay. Um, logistics for food. So there's going to be uh, concessions open Friday and Saturday. It, uh, you know, the good old concession fair. Um, there's actually a menu that I'm going to show you here in just a sec. Um, you are allowed to bring your own food if you wish. Um, you, uh, uh, you're also allowed to use the cafeteria after 1 p.m. The school lunches, I think there are two, two shifts of school lunches. It is a big school, and uh, they, uh, they don't really finish out there until about 12.45, and they needed about 15 minutes to clean up for us. Um, so uh, lunch is going to be around 1. Um, your teams can eat in the pits. or if uh, We're really hoping it's going to be nice outside, um, so um, they may be able to, to step outside the pits or out in the parking lot. And, um, so, uh, uh, but uh, remember that the, it is an open layout in the school, so uh, make sure that your teams are being a little respectful of the fact that there are classes happening down the hallways. We would really appreciate that on Friday. 
Box lunches, yes, there are box lunches available. Available if your team would like to uh, to make use of that. There, this is a semi-rural um, school. There aren't really services. Um, weren't really services terribly close. So um, allow me to show you uh, the box lunch order form, which is if you go up here to uh, FRC district model and you come down to click on Auburn Mountain View. Some of you uh, noticed this morning that that link didn't work, but it works now. Um, and uh, you can find a uh, the, the lunch options, which are right down here towards the bottom. Um, there's a lovely PDF that is all of um, 20 minutes old, um, and it, it'll show you what, what's being served and when. There's also uh, the ability to pre-order, and we uh, really recommend that you pre-order so that, uh, in fact, actually, for box lunches and pizzas, you really need to pre-order so the school can take care of it. Uh, there's an order form here, um, and uh, I'll let you peruse the whole thing. It's quite an extensive menu. There's a lot of good stuff on here. Um, so there you go. Uh, this will this this will all be between um, you and the school. Um, so um, the uh, the order form is going to get sent directly to uh, these people down here. So the deadline is is Wednesday, February nineteenth. Um, and there's you can fax it or you can email it or you can mail it, um, whichever you prefer. Um, looks like they'll take uh, uh, POs, checks, and uh, procurement card, is that a credit card? Do we know? Regina? Yes, Kevin, that is a credit card. Okay, awesome. Kevin, we have another question about eating with the pits, and maybe this is for Regina. Will food be allowed in the pit area? We'd prefer not to have food in the pits, but um, because of our small space, it may end up being that they'll need... I, I wouldn't recommend eating in the pits, but we're not going to police it like really hard, but we really want you to um, take advantage of the, the commons area will be available during most of the time that we're going to be actively um, eating and uh, where food will be available. Um, so that whole commons area outside of the gym area will be available for us except during um, our actual school lunch. So that's the only time period where I think eating in the pits would be sort of happen, but um, we prefer you not just because it's easier to clean up. Um, the cafeteria. Yep, thank you. Okay, so th there's the order form. Again, you can find that on firstwa.org uh, under the FRC uh, district model uh, Auburn Mountain View page. All right. Um, and please clean up after yourself. We're, uh, th this is all new to us too, um, <laughs> but we, we can pretty much uh, give you a, a few things that we anticipate. We anticipate that the space is going to be a lot smaller than normal, so uh, you do need to clean up after yourself. Auburn Mountain View uses a, they recycle a lot, so there's going to be, uh, please pay attention to the recycling. Um, they actually save uh, uh, like tens of thousands of dollars a year out of the school budget by being very proactive recyclers. Um, they have a very small waste stream. The rest of it goes to compost and recycling, so uh, They'd really appreciate it if you could help out with that. Um, we'll, we'll remind you of that of, a few times while you're there. All right, moving on. Um, uh, we are in an open school, and so what we're going to do is we're going to give every student, mentor, and team member a, a wristband. Um, and that wristband identifies you as a, a first participant. Um, what this will allow us to do is to keep track of, of uh, who's who as, as they're walking around. Um, we, we really, in, we require you guys to wear these because uh, otherwise, we, you know, we may, we may spend a lot of time wondering um, who that student is that, that is mucking around or, you know, might be digging through the pits. We don't expect any problems whatsoever with that, but just um, the other part of it is that that will also identify you to the school staff um, so they know whether um, your students uh, should actually be in the hallway or not, and those sorts of things. So we're just trying to be able to identify ourselves as as the uh, first population. So th that is a required thing. We will provide those. Um, you'll get a bunch in your registration packet. If you need more, PIT admin will have those. Okay. Um, we're going to reiterate this one more time because there's been a lot of uh, a lot of questions about it. Um, 
the pit area is on a generator. The generator has a fixed amount of power it can provide. And um, if you watch the other uh, presentations, um, the, 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 our ability to uh, uh, provide you power is limited. It's, um, the generator will be shut down overnight. Um, so if you're, if, you're, you know, if you're concerned about charging batteries, you can take them home with you. You can charge them in a hotel if you're staying overnight. Um, the, however, the, the amount of power that you can draw from our generator is somewhat limited. Now, having said that, let's clear, clear a few rumors. <laughs> the battery chargers charge at 6 amps. That's 6 amps of 12 volt power. And I believe if you did 6 times 12, that would be 84 watts of power. Um, so you, you can use a couple of battery chargers if you need to. However, if you're, if you're one of the teams coming in with one of those racks that can charge 20 batteries at a time, you're likely to blow right past your, your power allocation. It is going to be up to you and your neighboring teams to monitor your own power usage. The breakers will trip. Um, if the breakers trip, uh, you need to work that out with your power alliance. So uh, we, will, uh, we have uh, power meters that we can use to help diagnose any problems, but the reality is that we're expecting you guys to take care of your own power, all right? So the biggest uh, consumers are flat panel displays and uh, incandescent lighting. Uh, so honestly, if you're kind of, if you have a lot of flat panel displays you're planning on using, um, you might want to save those for the district championship in Portland. Um, they consume an enormous amount of power, actually. They're, uh, and uh, same thing with anything inductive or, or large motors, okay? Now, the other thing is high school gyms have very little power in them. We are using all of the power that is available in the gym to power the field and to power the AV system. If you plug something in in the gym, we will confiscate it and you will get it back Saturday night. Um, we're going to be kind of sticky about this and we're going to put signs up and we're going to remind everybody, but the reality is that somebody's going to come running in feeling the need to plug a, an iPhone or a, or a uh, an extra battery in, in, in the gym and we will take it away from you. So we apologize. That's just the way it's got to be. Um, so please don't plan on plugging anything into the pits. Yes, I know you have the world's greatest scouting app that requires powder. Yes, I know that you've got your laptops and, your, and all your scouting stuff, but we just don't have uh, enough electricity in the building for that. We apologize. Okay? Can Kevin, and Kevin, can, can we add too that um, we ask the teams to make sure that, that whoever comes to watch them, family and friends, are aware of that as well. We kind of leave it up to you to make sure that the people around you have that information. Yes. And there will be a sign by every outlet in the gym. <laughs> there is a limited number of plugins in the commons that will not be accessible, could be accessible outside of our lunchtime, but I think there's only eight to 12. Um, so those could be used but because they're on a separate circuit from the gym. So, But keep that information kind of tight to yourselves so that you know. And um, if we start seeing things stacked up out there, we're going to have to cut the, we'll have to tape those over too. Yep. Okay. So, hate to be a stickler on that, but there you go. All right. So that, um, that sort of concludes the what you would call the, um, the event specific part. However, since you may or may not have seen the rest of this, I'm going to just keep plowing right ahead. Um, let's talk a little bit about the event. Thursday. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Um, in case people leave, I did want to make a note. We decided to go ahead and offer uh, commemorative t-shirts for the first district event. And if your team wants to pre-order those, those are on the same order form as the food order form. So again, we're going to have some special t-shirts to have just the Auburn Mountain View activity. You know, Ariel's um, kind of, they're going to be blue. And if you're interested, um, there's a box at the, the bottom corner of the order page. It looks like you got it there. Commemorative shirts, royal blue. They'll be $12 each. Um, we really encourage you to pre-order those so they can actually be pre-done and given to you when you check in on Thursday night um, as part of your team check-in packet. Uh, so if you can do that, that would be great. Otherwise, they will be a limited uh, number available. Um, I don't remember the number that's ordered. Uh, if you're interested, 
pre-orders are great. We'll still have them on site as well, but they'll only be made to order. And it's a $12 shirt. I'll buy a bunch of them because, hey, why not? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, so some, some uh, questions that may or may not have gotten answered that are probably uh, – um, <laughs> are probably known. Um, are there any nearby food places? Cameron was asking. Adrian answered, but the, the reality is that um, there there aren't a lot of lunch options. Um, there's the Safeway and there's some stuff in Kent, but you'll, you'll need to hurry up. Remember that this is a 36-team event. You are going to play 12 rounds. Things move a little faster at this one. The time between your rounds is going to be a little shorter than maybe the, what you're used to at a first event. Um, in general, you're going to be playing every, on average, every four to six rounds. So uh, things go pretty quick. Um, in Seattle, when we had 64 teams, you could sometimes could go a whole hour without having an event, but that isn't the case here. Okay. So we do have um, the local options that we have that are within about a, a five-minute drive. It are We have two Subway um, locations. We have um, a pizza place. We do have a Starbucks that's within five minutes. Um, the Safeway parking lot, or the Safeway has as well, um, there's a, a Fudd um, place, and there's also a Herpes and a Teriyaki place. So those are all within. Um, five minutes north of the school on 132nd or um, five minutes south on 124th. But what people need to remember, though, is you'll have to get a shuttle to your car, and right now the shuttles are running every 15 minutes. Um, so by the time you take a shuttle to your car and take, just take the shuttle back, that could take you approximately a half an hour, so you're not going to have much time to drive somewhere. I did point that out mostly for those of you that might be looking for food venues on Thursday night because we will not have any food available on site for Thursday um, pit load-in. So if you wanted to pick up on those places, otherwise, yeah, it, that's why we're providing so many options on campus for all of the folks coming is because we knew that was going to be an issue. Okay, so um, it looks like this is probably safe here, right? On Kent Kangley? Yeah, that's the Safeway parking lot. Okay. So it's, it's actually not that far uh, from the school. It's right here. Okay. So, um, all right. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about some um, – I managed to skip ahead there. Okay. So let's talk about um, – uh, all right. So Thursday is all about passing inspection. Unlike years past – Thursday is not final build day. Final build day was Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, or t Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in your own shop. Okay, you get six hours uh, in your own shop. When you show up on Thursday, your sole job is to pass inspection. Period. <laughs> so uh, I know everybody's all talking about their forty-five pounds of withholding allowance and all the rest of that stuff. The reality is, if you're showing up with forty-five pounds of withholding stuff. You're doing it wrong. We want you to show up and pass inspection. There will be an inspection uh, sheet that's going to be sent out prior to the event. Um, it should happen in a day or so. Um, so be prepared for that. Okay. So um, uh, when you okay, so load in an inspection is Thursday at 5 p.m. You have to have safety glasses. Uh, you won't be allowed in without them. It's just, it's it's uh, it's the pits. Uh, so uh, be sure that you're prepared for that. Um, please follow the instructions from the volunteers. Um, we're going to be guiding people in. Some of this is new to us uh, as well, so uh, we appreciate your gracious professionalism in helping us smooth out any wrinkles in our plans, but we think we got it. Um, please don't park in that loading area behind the, the pits, um, uh, so don't park your vehicle and come inside. You need to drop it and and then go park somewhere else, okay? Um, so make sure that your your car unload team is big enough to make that happen. Do not leave your car unattended. 
you really should bring a cart because you're going to be, most of us carry a bunch of crap. Um, <laughs> remember that your team, your cart needs to have at least three inch diameter wheels. We're going to talk about it again in a little while, but um, you have to clear a two inch high protection, a cable protection bump at some point. And so you really want it, minimum three, four is even better. So, uh, um, and that is in our, our supplemental rules. Um, I'll go over that here in just a sec as well. So, again, your only goal on Thursday is passing inspection. It's not to work on your robot. Is that clear? Okay. Um, load out. Well, so the, the load out, which is the inverse of this, um, again, no, don't park out there. You can, un, you can go ahead and load out during the elimination rounds. It turns out only 12 teams, um, 12 teams will not make it to the elimination rounds, and you're welcome, to, if you're, turn out to be one of those, you're welcome to load out early and to come back in and watch. Um, that's a, a pretty common thing to do. All right. Ben, I've got some answers coming to you right now. <laughs> so, um, all, so like I was saying earlier, you have to have three inch diameter wheels. We, they need to be in good working order and they also need to be, um, some sort of rubber, um, or, um, We'd appreciate some sort of rubberized material, okay? Uh, we'd prefer that definitely no steel wheels, um, like they, they, they have these casters that go on the bottoms of some toolboxes. Um, oh, I guess my alarm just went off. Um, no, and then we're trying to avoid really hard plastic wheels. Remember, we are on basketball courts here. We do not want to scratch the floors. So uh, we're trying to avoid hard things. There is a maximum weight. There's the calculation for it. We want 50 pounds per inch of wheel size. So one cart, four three-inch wheels. That's uh, a three-inch wheel can hold 150 pounds times four. You get 600 pounds max. Um, so if if you come with this big rumbling cart, we may actually uh, t take a guess at how much your cart weighs. Okay. So please be aware of that. We are not allowing wheels less than three inches of diameter on any of your rolling equipment, boxes, or carts. Um, they ju it's just the likelihood of, of damaging something is just too high. It costs about $22,000 or so, $25,000 to refinish a basketball court. We don't want to have to do that. We certainly don't want to have to hand you the bill for it. So, uh, um, plus, you won't be able to clear those cable uh, bumps. We've seen this in the past. We have experience with this. Um, teams with little tiny wheels inevitably spill everything out of their cart uh, when they hit those those bumps. So you've been warned. Good. Any any questions about that? Um, so Cameron, you're asking. So we can't work on your robot Thursday. You may work on your robot on Thursday. You have five hours to pass inspection. If you're coming in expecting to uh, use extra time to finish your robot, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you won't have enough time. Your job on Thursday, pass inspection. Okay? So that is my, uh, that is my, my news to you. You're welcome to do whatever you need to do. If, if your robot needs fixing or if the inspectors find a problem, great. But you should check out what the robot access period is. We expect you to work on your robot in your own shop at home. You get six hours that week, and then you have five hours to pass inspection. I hope that made sense. You are allowed to work on your robot in the pits. Okay. Um, Did you see about the withholding and the and? Yes, the uh, Ben. Ben, I'm going to refer you to the rules about withholding. Um, that you you're allowed to withhold. It, it, there was a recent update. You can hold back 45 pounds worth of stuff. Um, I, I'm not going to try and go over that here because if I screw it up, you're going to you're going to not like me. You need to read those rules for yourself. It's in the man game manual in the administrative section. Okay. All right. Um, well, I've already said all this, so there you go. <laughs> uh, if you're a newer team. Uh, or, or any team actually, asking for help is a great thing. So if you are stuck somehow, ask for team, help from the teams around you. And just a hint, teams with lower numbers typically have more experienced people on them. So, uh, you know, if, if you're looking and you had your choice of, of picking Team 5090 or pick Team 360, 
chances are Team 360, somebody on the team may have seen your problem before. Doesn't mean that 5090 can't help you as well, but if, if you're feeling stuck and, and the higher number teams can't help you, head down to the low numbers. Anybody below, say, about 2100 ought to be able to help you out pretty nicely. Okay. Um, okay, Thursday, pits open 5 p.m. At exactly 5 p.m., we will open the pits. We won't open any earlier. Um, so uh, don't just come sauntering into the building because a door happens to be open. We will kick you out, um, and we will be as gracious as possible, but we really do need until 5 p.m. to get the building ready for you. You must have safety glasses covering your eyes on your face, okay? And you must bring your own safety glasses for your team. Please, uh, please help us out with that. We really appreciate it, right? Um, so in general, if you are an experienced team, um, <laughs> here's the deal. We're, we're not on site as long as we used to be. These are smaller events. The, the pits are substantially smaller than what you're used to. I mean, your pit size is still by 10 by 10, but a lot of them have nine-foot aisles. There isn't a whole lot of extra room. Um, plus, you know, you get five hours to get yourself set up and pass inspection. So we're uh, requesting that you kind of adopt the mantra of do less, better. <laughs> um, so we want you to, you know, uh, Express your team's identity. Do all of the things that, that make your team extra cool. But, you know, hey, if, if you have a, uh, a pit area that takes you more than a, an hour to set up, uh, maybe you want, might want to prune that down a little bit and, and you know, maybe uh, leave out some of the super bells and whistles that take you a long time to assemble. Um, we're not going to kick you out. It's not a, a, a mark against you or anything like that. But I, I think we... Um, for those of us who have been doing this for a while, we need to have a little bit of a, of a, a rethink on how long we're actually on site because it, it isn't very long. You're welcome to do your big pit displays. You, you might want to save them for Portland because um, that, that might be a better venue for you, okay, for the really big stuff. Any questions about that? No requirements, just suggestions. Okay. Um, uh, as always, we need your team to register at 5 p.m. Take your, your lead mentor needs to go to the PID admin disk, desk. Bring your forms. You need to have your TIMS form with any handwritten additions um, and consent forms for anybody who are not in TIMS or STIMS. Um, standard check-in procedure. Uh, we will exchange your uh, TIMS information with a, uh, a packet that has your driver buttons and your wristbands and all the rest of the stuff that goes with checking in. Okay. Very good, sir. Um, also keep in mind that uh, somebody's going to likely to come around and ask for student volunteers from you. Um, we don't have quite as many student volunteer positions as we have in the past, but we still have a number, um, especially for safety glasses and those sorts of things. We appreciate your help. Um, while I'm at it, um, you know, we're, um, we're also looking for judges, so I'm going to put in a, a peg for judges. <laughs> We're, we, we would love to have uh, mentors or school administrators or your sponsors or your parents uh, come in and be judges at, at our events on the west side. Um, we're, we're actually running uh, fairly short on judges. Um, it is a great experience. Um, we will uh, treat you like kings. Um, we're not going to let you judge your own team, but you, you, you'll be able to help out. And, and gain some experience about what it actually is like in the judging room. So especially you experienced teams, this is your chance to send somebody in to find out what the heck the judges are thinking and talking about. Um, so we'd appreciate it if you would uh, think about whether you can um, free up a, a, uh, a mentor or a parent or an interested party. The judges, we need them all day Friday and all day Saturday. Um, we have a few limited spots for people who can only come on Saturday. Um, so you would, you would be doing just Dean's List judging. But we'd appreciate, um, we'd appreciate every team trying to find at least one person that could help us with judging. We'll, tr we'll try our best to make use of them. We're currently looking for about 13 additional judges at this specific event. And so if you, there's any way you can help us out, we'd appreciate it. Um, also, mentors. 
Um, we also need help with inspectors on Thursday. Um, and so if you, uh, uh, we rely heavily on our experience mentor pool. If you have not signed up in on our volunteer system, uh, it's, it's a really easy thing to do. Um, you just go to um, our website and you go to volunteer.firstlaw.org um, and you can, uh, if you don't have an account, you can create an account. It'll do the send you an email and for confirmation. And then when you uh, come back here and log in, um, you can, uh, I'll just show you real quick. It's real easy to pick an event. Um, I can come in here. I'll just get myself all the way down to just, just FRC. And so here's Auburn Mountain View. And I can come in here and I can, I can, um, I can volunteer at this event. And I can pick a, a position. I could be a judge. I can be a uh, inspectors are down in the pit area. No, nope. inspectors are down in the robot inspector group. So we'd love to see inspectors. We'd love to see judges. Okay, we'd really appreciate your help with this. Um, we are getting a little concerned that we don't have enough folks to give the kids a positive experience. All right, there's that plug. <laughs> Susan's smiling, I'm sure, at this point. So. Uh, um, so I'm what grinning to ear to ear, and I'm waiting for everybody to sign up. Oh, I'm ready to assign you. That's Susan Martucci. She's one of the original uh, uh, first law partners, and she's our our lead volunteer coordinator. And she would love to to help you guys get signed up. So, okay, what to bring on Thursday? Thank you. Thursday, by the way, is a day of robot inspection. <laughs> um, honestly, there's not a whole lot for the rest of your team to do. We started thinking about this uh, last week of, oh, well, you know, the, the field crew will be in setting up the field in the, in the main gym until probably 8 or 9 at night. So there's not a whole lot going on in there. There's really not a huge amount of room in the pits, and there's really not a huge space for people to go. So having said that, if you wanted to come with a minimal crew of, of builders and mentors on Thursday, and save the uh, your auxiliary team members or, or other team members for Friday morning, that might be a, a pretty prudent move because otherwise you're going to have a, a bunch of kids sitting there for five hours with not a lot to do. And uh, that sort of, um, that can sometimes cause issues. Um, so it it's not a spectator day. It's, it's really sort of a work day on Thursday. A Friday would be a much better day for folks to arrive. They can watch the practice rounds in the morning on Friday, and it'll be all good and exciting, okay? Um, Alan is, Kevin, is asking... Kevin, we have a question. Okay. Yeah, Alan's asking, Go are ahead. there practice rounds at 5 p.m. on Thursday? Alan, no. We actually changed the schedule um, about uh, two or three weeks ago. Practice rounds are going to be on Friday morning. Um, you'll, everybody will have at least one practice round Friday morning. Um, if and this is a big if, if we get the field done in record time, which is entirely possible given the people who are setting this thing up, they're the best field supervisors on the planet, my, in my opinion, um, we may open the field up for some practice rounds on Thursday night. Um, it wouldn't be till like 8 or 9, and, and we wouldn't schedule anything. We'll just invite some teams to come out and give it a whirl. Okay? Um, but don't, don't plan on practice. Now, the practice field, the practice field will be set up on Thursday. Um, it'll probably get set up and up and going around 6 o'clock. Um, so that is not practicing on the real field. That's practicing on, on the um, sort of home-brewed practice field in the pit area. Okay? So that will be available for you. I hope that answered your question. All right, moving on. So uh, veteran teams. Um, um, we are running on uh, spare parts uh, cart light. <laughs> they've, they've, they're sending us a spare parts uh, uh, bin, but it, it isn't a full load. So if you had some stuff, uh, any unused sensors, really control units are important to us, like, you know, the sidecars. Um, motors, especially anything with a gearhead on it, if you have some extra Bainbot motors or, uh, or anything like that, we'd really appreciate um, you having a, a, some of that stuff on hand. Um, there's going to be uh, a need for loans. There's probably going to need a, um, motor controllers and those sorts of things. So if you could bring a little, a little uh, 
care package. It doesn't have to be very big, just a small Amazon box or something, or a medium-sized Amazon box full of stuff. Uh, we'd appreciate it, and you can you can kind of stash it away. And if if we really start begging, you you'll be able to break that out and help somebody out. Okay. All right. Our machine shop will be on site. Uh, it'll open at 5 p.m. Uh, our volunteers will be in there. We have a small lathe. We have a small mill. Some other various tools. Um, these uh, these tools are for our volunteers to use, not for you to use. We're not going to loan you anything, um, so please don't ask. <laughs> we do have a TIG welder, um, and uh, and but remember, we you know we these are volunteer machinists. Um, there are limits to what they can do for your team, so don't don't expect them to. Uh, spend six hours rebuilding a, a intricate gearbox for you. It, they're, they're there for sort of, you know, what was the old show, MASH 4077? This is sort of meatball machinist work, so meatball surgery. They're, they're not going to be, they, they, they'll try, but they may not be able to dedicate hours and hours of time just to your specific team. So uh, keep that in mind um, and treat them very nicely. They are volunteers. We appreciate it. Oh, we're getting close. Um, all right, inspections. If you haven't done inspections before, there are four steps. You need to size and weigh in. Uh, the sizing will be done. Um, I'm not sure whether we're going to do it in your pit or not. Uh, there is no sizing box this year, but we do have scales. Um, there will be a control system inspection at the CSA station, um, which is also about the same time that you're going to program your WPA key or your, your robot key. Um, Somebody, somebody will be there to help you with all of that. Physical robot inspections, um, will, you can sign up for them at 5 p.m. when you walk in the door. Uh, I think it's total brownie points to the first 10 teams who can register for an inspection, and uh, I will come and shake your hand if you do that. <laughs> uh, so uh, be, be first. Uh, you really want to sign up as early as possible. Um, uh, the connection to the field will definitely happen on Friday morning. We may be able to drag some of you out on Thursday night, and we'll try and get as many people through that as we can. Remember, the inspectors are your friend. Um, they're, they are other mentors. They get it. They've done this before. Um, and they really, their job is to help you pass inspection. So don't think that they're, they're not the bad guys here. They're just trying to get through the checklist to make sure that you guys um, are, are safe, are valid, and are following the rules, okay? Um, Somebody is going to be overweight. Somebody is going to be oversized. Um, uh, please, please, please go through the inspection sheet on your own. We'll be sending that out here in a day or two. Make sure that you followed all the rules, um, and especially with size and weight. Size and weight are very difficult to deal with, especially when you have a short amount of time. Okay. Next. Come on. There we go. Um, oh, hey, I already did this. So there. Yep. All right. Um, it is rare for a robot to pass inspection on the first attempt, so it, it is an iterative process, especially at your first event. So I'm going to reiterate it here again, get inspected early, um, and uh, you, the key is if you have to pass inspection to earn qualifying points. So you can't actually score any district points or qualification points unless you've passed inspection. And actually, uh, they, they, I'm not sure what the rule is this year, they may not actually allow you to play. Um, we'll have to check with the FTA on that. Okay. Um, we already talked about this, so I'll just whiz past that. Um, connecting to the field, very important. Our goal is to get you out connected to the field and um, uh, uh, connect to the field. Make sure, and, and if we can do that early, if there's a problem, um, at, you know, the, the, FTAs can help you out with that, and the uh, CSAs can help you out with that. Um, so it's really important that we get that done on Friday morning, okay? All right. Uh, practice rounds will probably start somewhere around 8.30 on Friday morning, okay? Practice matches will run until about 10.30, maybe 11 a.m. It sort of depends. Um, on, on how things are, are looking. There will be a driver's meeting in there somewhere. Um, I, I don't, uh, I need to check with the uh, referees. Adrian, we need to remember yes. to ask the referees if they want to try and do the driver's meeting. No, Susan, 
Dry, referees are coming in Friday morning, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yes, the referees, um, yes, they are. They will not be there until Friday morning, so they will have their own uh, meeting early, and I'm not exactly sure what time the driver meeting will be, uh, but it will be Friday morning. How about 10.30 a.m.? 10.30 sounds awesome. Okay, so there'll be a driver's meeting. Hey, see, look at that, guys. When you're when you when you're the boss, all sorts of cool things happen. We're going to do our driver's meeting at 10:30 a.m. on the field, and that will be right after practice matches. Woohoo! <laughs> um, I, uh, I will go yell to your head ref and tell him what he's doing with you guys. Yeah, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> um, and so it's very common for teams not to make their scheduled match. Um, so um, and and um, uh, so we will probably do more of a first come first serve basis on on uh, practice rounds. So you can go jump in a line uh, to get uh, to be up next. There will be a separate line if you have not connected to the field. We will always give those teams priority. So be gracious and professional on the fact that somebody may go ahead of you. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk about. <laughs> The, the big change that all of us need to get into our brains, I've said it before, here it comes again, Thursday is no longer the final build day that has always been in the past. Okay, You have this six-hour robot access period during the week. You should be using that in your own shop to do all of the things that you need to get done. Okay, um, So please, please, please uh, account for that. Don't expect to do a whole lot of work on your robot on Thursday. It just you're doing it wrong if you're doing that. Um, the uh, uh, first is about to change the rules on on robot access periods. One of them, they will allow you to take the robot out of the bag for 30 minutes. Um, if you want, we can get try to get you a certified inspector, or one of your mentors can get certified as an inspector and you can remove your robot from the bag for 30 minutes and then put it back in the bag and you can do that as a pre-inspection. Highly recommend doing that. It's, uh, uh, again, it's just easier to fix stuff at home. So uh, uh, Frank will be updating that, that rule here in um, just a couple of days. Uh, if he didn't do it already, it's probably going out in tomorrow's blog. So there, hey, I give you a preview of tomorrow's blog. All right, almost done. End of Thursday. The pits close at 10 on Thursday. You have to be out of the building before 10, <laughs> as in the building closes at 10 and we need to get our volunteers home. So we will start pushing you out the door at 9.55. So, uh, and there are no exceptions. Um, the, we, our volunteers will have been there all day. They need to show up early the next morning. The building people need to clean up and leave. So we, uh, you, you'll hear my magical voice right at 9.50 or so. Uh, encouraging you to leave. <laughs> and I will sing karaoke at you, which is just a really painful thing. So, uh, okay. Um, Michael has asked, since this is our first event, do we get to unbag for six hours the week prior or bag from the 18th until you arrive? Michael, you, you'll need to check the rules. You are a district model, um, a district event. You get a six hour robot access period the week before your event. I'm going to let you read the specific details in the manual so that I don't tell you something that you misinterpret. Okay, So please read the rules. They're actually pretty clearly spelled out. The gist of it, and these are not the rules of it, but the gist of it is you can work on your robot for six hours. It's supposed to be in two-hour blocks, but I think I got them to change that. Um, you can take it out for as little as 30 minutes um, and uh, work on it at home in your own shop. That replaces what used to be Thursday morning. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Please read the rules on that one on yourself. It's a it's, it's a critical rule for you guys to understand. Okay? Any other questions about that? All right. Thank you. <laughs> so the uh, uh, the link is now incorrect, so I'm going to show you I, I will get that fixed. Um, if you look on our website, if you go up to uh, firstwa.org, no, that wasn't it either. Hang on a sec, I got it. Uh, if you go to firstwa.org, 
and you go to FRC and you go to district model and you come down here to Auburn Mountain View, district model, Auburn Mountain View, um, if you come down to the bottom, um, the slides for this team briefing are right here. Um, you're welcome to download them immediately. Um, the, po the video, um, I, I did record this. There is a break in it, so I'm going to have to edit it together, but we will post it on YouTube. Um, and uh, so you'll, you'll be able to hear what was said right at the beginning. All right? And, and one more... Um, um, and one more little ditty is remember to go to district model check-in. Uh, all of your lead mentors should fill in this form. Um, just, we just need one person per team to do this. Um, and so we, uh, you need to tell us whether you want a pit table or not and whether you have more than three-inch wheels. So this is a really important thing. We're, we're asking for the, the mentor who's going to be the lead mentor that we would contact in case of, of issues at this event. Um, and so you need to select this specific event. Um, we, we'll, you'll need to fill this out for each one of your events. Um, so go ahead, if you want to do them both at once, that's great. Um, so we really appreciate you doing this by a week from today. By a week from uh, today is Thursday the 20th. And after that, we can't guarantee that you'll get a pit table if you need one. All right. I think that is the end. I am sorry that we ran a little bit over an hour, um, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, and I will sit here and take any questions that pop up.